Now we're in the quarry. The comparison that the Holy Spirit is making is profound indeed. He is making a comparison that if we can get a hold on it, if we can get our mind wrapped around it, you'll submit to the man that's making the changes in you. You'll submit Amen. because, you know, it's actually going to lessen the amount of time that you have to spend here. Amen. You can no more make yourself a son than you can make your neighbor a son. You can't do it. You say, well, I'll look at my neighbor the other day, and I decided I'm gonna, I'll call him my son. Well, you can call him your son all you want. He's not your son. But there's just one thing you can do. You can make your calling and election sure. Mm -hmm. See, we're not asked to challenge this. We're asked to believe it. Yes, Sons do get the inheritance. They do get it. It isn't like they could get it. They should get it. The sons get what the Father has laid up for them. Well, what the Father's laid up for you is worth submitting to whatever chastening he, he put you through right now in order that you might obtain it on that day. Whatever it is, it's worth it. Sons, get the inheritance. Now, now I say, this is Galatians 4, that the heir, as long as he is a child, Differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. You do own the, the, the kingdom and, and the glory is going to be given unto you someday because the Father has determined this. But you're not ready yet. No, right now, he's still preparing you for your inheritance. Now, this is a glorious thing. If he was to give you your inheritance before now, we have an account in Scripture where a man took his inheritance before he was ready. And it didn't benefit him, didn't benefit the father, didn't benefit the other son, didn't benefit any part of the plantation or anything. It was wrong. See, God's not going to do that. He's not going to give you the inheritance until you're ready to use it. And boy, when you get it, you're going to reign with him going to reign with Christ forever and ever. Amen. Now when the scourging, when is the scourging of the Lord effective? When? When sin hurts. That's when it's effective. See, when it hurts you to do something yeah. that's wrong, what's happened? The scourging was effective. It touched you. It touched you. And when it touched you, it was effective. See, when, when you hate sin as much as God hates sin, now you can partake of his holiness. Now you can. When is a stone ready for shipment? When it fits. That's when he'll send it up the river. 1 Peter 2.5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, which, of course, we have to have some spiritual masons at work. You look out at the church and say, What's wrong with the church? The spiritual masons have gone to sleep. They're not, they're not doing their work. They're not speaking the word to where it can cut and it can knock off the areas that need to be knocked off. Right. They're saying it's okay. It's all right. God will understand and on the other side, he'll make everything right. Reject, reject. God doesn't, there is no working done in the temple. When it gets there, there is no sound of a, of a hammer. Why? Because they perfectly fit. See, the, the fact is, is that when you send up something that doesn't belong, it doesn't get in. It doesn't. It burns up on the way. God, we know, is on the initiative to bring many sons to glory. God can't fail. There isn't anything that God's ever attempted to do that he didn't complete. God is, is bringing many sons to glory. Only those who are sons will have profited from Christ's ministry. In the end, Christ only ministers to those that the Father gave him. Remember in John 17? He gave him some. Those are the ones he kept. I said, Father, I've kept them. I have kept them. He's still keeping us today. There will not be any on that day that are given access to the tree of life that didn't enter through the person of Christ Jesus, which is the chief mason. Yeah, amen. See, You've got to come through him, and he doesn't take his work lightly at all. Jesus doesn't allow flesh to live. He puts it to death. Now is the day of salvation, or we could say the age of grace. 
If men are to believe, it has got to occur during this time, during the space of time that God's given us, this time of salvation. You, if you're going to get in, you got to get in now. Soon the time of the Gentiles will be completed, if it's not already completed. I mean, this is kind of left up to controversy. It is, is the time of the... I mean, how long has there been since there's been any kind of revival in the church, in the Gentile church? So these, these kind of things you got to ask your, in your mind, to ask the question, is it, a, is it complete? Yeah. Are the Jews going to just one day turn and repent? And See, this thing is slated for destruction. This world isn't going to stand here. You know, they're, the scoffers, they say, well, everything just continued on as it has from the beginning. That's just a lie. Everything hasn't continued on. They forget about the flood. They forget about, <laughs> about, about Jesus coming and taking away the sins of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They forget the fact that he's coming back. The same one that left, he's coming back. It's a set time. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're living in the day of salvation. See, now, as long as a person can be brought to repentance, they can be saved. They can be given the gift of the Holy Spirit. They can start this journey on being converted and transformed into the image of God's Son. Now, how could these things happen in the day of the open heaven? This is the question that John, John, this is the question that John was asking himself as he looked in and he saw Babylon. How could this happen? How could the church, how could they turn away like this? How could they be a great falling away? Revelation 22, there's coming a time when we won't be amazed anymore when we look and say, how, how could this be? How could it be that someone could start in the faith and then cast it over for such paltry baubles? How could, how could this happen? There's coming a time when he that is just, he'll be just still. He that's unjust, he'll be unjust still. See, when Jesus comes back, it's like the freeze is put on all. It's just Amen. exactly the way it is. It's the way it's going to be for all eternity. Well, now, in light of that, see, if, if this can get a hold of your spirit, you'll give all diligence in making your call and election sure. Whatever, whatever the Lord asks you to endure, you'll endure it as a soldier of the cross. You'll say, I'm going to do this for my King of kings and my Lord of lords. I'm going to submit myself unto the Father's spirits and live. And behold, one final word from Christ here. I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. It'll be your right. It'll be your good pleasure on that day to just stroll up to the tree of life. I can just, I can just speak, just, just speak it as a man. You coming up there with, with perhaps Brother Fred and say, let's just have ourselves a little bite here. <laughs> let's just, let's just co come aside and look at this great wonder. You know, it's going to be a, it's going to be an everlasting joy. It's going to overtake you and it's never going to go away. You're going to be with the Lord forevermore. See, that's worth whatever he asks you to endure now. Thank you, Brother. <laughs>